Some breaking news now on the special counsel Russia Medley investigation. The New York Times just posting a story quoting sources saying the special counsel Robert Mueller and his team of prosecutors looking at the president's tweets as part of trying to answer the question of whether the president deliberately in a calculated scheme was trying to obstruct justice, obstruct the first the FBI investigation and now the special counsel investigation into Russia's attacks on the 2016 elections. Let me read you a little bit from that story. Uh, the special counsel Robert S. Mueller is scrutinizing tweets and negative statements from the president about Attorney General Jeff Sessions and the former FBI Director James B. Comey, according to three people briefed on the matter. Mr. Mueller wants to question the president about the tweets. His interest in them is the latest addition to a range of presidential actions he is investigating as a possible obstruction case. Uh, the white, uh, they quote Rudy Giuliani, the president's lawyer in this piece, is saying the president's a politician, he's under constant attack, and Mr. Giuliani's view, and he has every right to defend himself in public. But it is interesting if you try to think of the puzzle pieces of obstruction of justice. Um, we know the president has publicly criticized Comey and Jeff Sessions, his attorney general, on Twitter, in speeches, and elsewhere. The question is, do you then have other private acts asking other people to do anything? That's the stitching of the quilt, if you will, the Times says Mueller is trying to put together. I mean, so much of this investigation is still uh, secret, but one thing that is not secret is the president's feelings. He, um, you know, um, um, opens up a window to them every time he sends out a tweet. So we do know back in that a period in May of last year when he fired James Comey still remains a central item of issue, a point of, of interest in the Mueller inquiry of obstruction of justice. So what the president said, um, he had several stories when he was talking about why he fired James Comey. He explained to a Lester Holt uh, um, something and then he's been, you know, all over the board since then. But going after Jeff Sessions repeatedly, we um, have already learned that, uh, that that is a subject of the inquiry here. The chances of the president sitting for an interview with Bob Mueller to find out about um, his mindset um, of this, I think, is a diminishing. I mean, right. the time for that has sort of been out the window, uh, and we'll, we'll see what that happens. But again, the president's own words are now front and center in this investigation. Well, to that point, it puts on the table the question of will Mueller go ahead with a subpoena? If sure. he's going to do that, will he do it before 60 days, before the November elections? Will he wait till after the November elections uh, if the negotiations continue? But to your point, uh, this from the story, privately some of the lawyers, meaning the president's lawyers, have expressed concern that Mr. Mueller will stitch together several episodes, encounters, and pieces of evidence like the tweets to build a case that the president embarked on a broad effort to interfere with the investigation. Uh, that is why the president's lawyers have tried in the negotiations with Mueller to say you can ask him about the campaign, but you can't ask him about anything as president of the United States. And I cannot imagine that that's a deal Robert Mueller would ever on this planet accept. Well, no, and to, and to Jeff's point, the chances are clearly almost nil that he would willingly sit for an interview, but he may not have a choice. That's what the subpoena would be about. Uh, you know, the, in any criminal scenario, the intent of the person who's being investigated is very important. And we have always had a very good window into the president's intentions and exactly what he is thinking because he tells us all the time. So, you, so yes, absolutely. The, the, this on the one hand, seems a little seems kind of obvious that they would use the tweets uh, as part of that narrative. Uh, but on the other hand, it does open this whole th this whole area of. Uh, the way that they are going to understand what the president's thinking. And this is just a very good reminder uh, of why the people closest to Donald Trump, uh, advisors, aides, uh, his legal team have always viewed uh, Twitter as such a dangerous tool for Donald Trump. Jeff, as you were saying, this is the medium that he uses uh, without a filter. Uh, this is where you know exactly uh, what the president is thinking and feeling. And as the story points out, you know, Robert Mueller and his team could be using the tweets to try to build a case to see if they can build a case uh, using the Twitter, using the tweets, uh, using other information that they've gathered uh, to see if they can make the case that there was any sort of attempt and intention uh, for obstruction of justice. Uh, and I think the reason that people are so worried, the people close to Donald Trump, about a potential sit down and interview with Robert Mueller is, of course, because this is the one setting where he cannot have people around him explaining away uh, what he actually meant to say. Uh, the interview, whatever he said, sort of goes. Uh, and this is not a situation where, you know, the spokesperson goes behind the podium and says, well, yes, the president treated this. However, what his actual uh, intention and meaning was something else. Right, and what we don't know is what are what have the dozens of officials who've been interviewed, including White House staffers at various levels, officials in the administration at various levels. What have they said? If Bob Mueller asked, you know, what was the president's mood that day? What did he say about that? When he tweeted that, did somebody help him with that tweet? Did he say anything about it? What did he do privately after that tweet? What did he ask you to do about this subject? That's the part we don't know in this 
Rudy Giuliani, the president's lawyer, again saying, quote, if you're going to obstruct justice, you do it quietly and secretly, not in public. Uh, I think that's true in most cases. Right. Uh, in, mo in most cases, that is true, and Mr. Giuliani is a former prosecutor, uh, but there are exceptions to every rule. Well, and we see this time and time again with the president's Twitter feed is, through reporting, we've learned that a lot of what he tweets publicly, he has said or acted on privately. And so it is actually a very good window into his thinking, into his actions, into maybe something that he's been briefed on that's made him angry and made him want to either change the subject or obscure a fact that uh, that everybody knows is in evidence. Um, so as, as Molly said, it's, it's sort of obvious that they would want to include the tweets in sort of the tapestry of, you know, everything that the president has tried to do and say, but I think, you know, with Giuliani saying that, you know, he's a politician, he's just going to say these things, um, this is not a typical uh, situation where you have a politician saying one thing to his base and a president acting very differently behind closed doors. This is all of a piece. And I think the big question is going to be, is it that these tweets and these actions and statements that he's taken behind the scenes are pushing back when he feels threatened, or are they actually taking action that could be seen as obstructing an investigation. Right. Is he doing it to vent, to voice his opinion, or is he doing it as part of an effort uh, to obstruct the investigation or to intimidate his own officials? Here's one tweet the president sent once. Attorney General Jeff Sessions has taken a very weak position on Hillary Clinton crimes. Where are the emails, the DNC, the intel leakers? Uh, he's also tweeted at James Comey before. He tweeted at, the just, at Jeff Sessions many times. The Times story says that after several tweets against Sessions, an aide to Sessions sought derogatory information about the FBI director. Mr. Sessions, his aide told the Capitol Hill staff member, wanted one negative article a day in the news media about Mr. Comey, a person familiar with the meeting said. So the question there for Bob Mueller is, is that the president trying to pressure, using Twitter and other means, internal administration pressure as well, to pressure the FBI director to do something that ends up getting in the way of the investigation? Or is it, as Rudy Giuliani would say, the president has every right to fire people who work in the administration, so what? It, it really, going back to the idea of, of an interview, it seems like there's very little that he could be asked in an interview that he hasn't already come out and commented on in public, often in kind of mind-blowingly inflammatory uh, or revealing ways. Uh, this is why every lawyer tells a client who's under investigation, shut up. Don't right? Say don't say anything. Don't comment on the case. Don't talk about it, even to your friends, much less, you know, to the world. Uh, but uh, that is not Donald Trump's MO, and that clearly could come back to bite him. And, and to say that because, it's, because he didn't do it in secret, it doesn't count. I mean, that's like the guy who turns himself into the police and says, well, if I'd done it, would I be turning myself in? Mm -hmm. Usually, uh, that doesn't fly. Right. The question is, can you piece the public tweets and other statements together with, remember, the controversy early on when he called Admiral Mike Rogers and, and Dan Coates, the director of national intelligence, and right. did he just tell them to you know, get in Comey's way or did he just vent to them? And that's, they've been interviewed by the special counsel as well.